It is Monday in college football. We have three best bets on the way. It's Austin joined by Logan. Let's recap how we did on Friday slash Saturday this past weekend. Solid two and one day. We had an order name on Friday. That was sweat free. Then I thought it couldn't get easier. Maryland was absolutely sweat free. Then Wyoming did not come through. They ended up winning the game outright, which they had to come back from a deficit, but did not get us the three and no sleep, but we certainly will take a two and one day. We got three more picks inbound. We got some college football playoff picks, which I'm sure is why you clicked on this video. The biggest games of this college football season. And Logan, you had a great week last week went two and oh i delivered our only loser which you hate to see but i want you you got another two picks for the people i'll let you lead it off with the first one we're going to save the college football playoff picks until the end of the video but logan i really like the first one you got so kick it off what's the first pick going to be for monday yeah my first pick's a team that i've made a lot of money with betting this year it's a wagon i'm taking the liberty flame plus 17 and a half minus 113 odds on Fandle. currently your best value there i like the fact that we're getting the, the 17 and a half the half point hook on this one if you just look at this one in, in the in the fiesta bowl on monday january 1st as austin kind of mentioned we're we're starting with the appetizer games leading into the, the college football playoffs and i think this this is a great matchup we go look at liberty such a great season for them first season conference usa they couldn't have gotten any better undefeated conference champions led by caden salter who's just I, I can't say enough good things about him he's an absolute baller if you have never watched him i hope you do tune in for this game and see what he's all about because he accounted for 43 touchdowns this season now this liberty offense they're gonna have a, you know a tough time moving the ball against oregon's defense we know that oregon has the much better athletes if you will if you're just looking you know eyeball test get off the bus test Yes, Oregon will will have the, the advantage there. But there's a reason why I'm picking Liberty. And they had the most potent rushing game in the nations. They're number one uh, this, this year in, in nationally in rushing yards. Over 302 yards per game on average. I don't care what you want to say about this matchup versus Oregon. Running game is how you travel, you know, in, in football. If, you, if you're dropping back, you know, 40, 50 times a game, that's terrible, right? You, you, you know, more than often than not, the, the worst, you know, athletes type team uh, struggles in that team because the, the offensive line can't hold up in pass protection. But if you're just simply running the ball, which is Liberty's specialty, I think that's kind of where we see an advantage in this one and why I like them enough. The running game was the engine behind this offense. You know, that this Liberty offense was fifth in scoring. They averaged 40.8 points per game this season. They were just they were just a wagon offensively. And I think being good enough offensively can keep them in this game versus Oregon. I mean, you're getting 17 and a half points. What are you asking Liberty to do in this one? Just keep it close, right? Keep it within, you know, three possessions, honestly. You know, if they lose by 17, they lose by 17. That's easy, you know, that's an easy backdoor because if, you know, let's just say hypothetically they were down 24, well, a touchdown could cut that lead back to 17. And I really see them fighting hard in this game. After having their playoff hopes dashed with the loss to Washington, this Oregon team, I, I we've seen several opt-outs for them. They don't have anything to prove in this one. You know, the Kyrie Jackson and also the nation's number one center, Jackson Powers Johnson, both of those are, are supposed to not play in this one. Quarterback Bo Nix is supposed to play. He's I, I saw he, he's probably going to suit up for this one. But I have to question Oregon's motivation in this one. What do they have to prove by playing Liberty? Do they have anything really? Like, I mean, honestly, you question Liberty's motivation. Uh, there's no questions for Liberty's motivation is what I meant to say, because they are playing, you know, they're, they're punching up. You're facing one of the big time opponents in Oregon. Do you belong on this national stage? Do you belong on a New Year's Day Bowl? I think I think Liberty's going to answer the bell and and definitely you know be competitive in this game. This game to me has all the writings of an underdog playing the, the uh, you know Power Five conference pretty tough. You know, look at Boise Boise State Oklahoma in two thousand seven. You look at UCF versus Auburn a decade later. I just think this Fiesta Bowl has you know a, a great game written all over it. I don't think Liberty's going to lay down. I think they have a good enough offense to be able to backdoor any type of spread in this one. And I think they, they do play Oregon competitive in this one and taking the Liberty Flame as my first pick. But Austin, where are you going for your first pick? Yeah, I mean, look, we, we both love the Liberty Flames. Hopefully they deliver us, deliver us another winner because they've been so good for us this season. Now, my first pick and only pick for this video, then we'll talk about the next, the playoff games, then we'll talk about a lean in those games. I'm talking about Wisconsin, taking them plus 10 and a half, the Badgers, as they are, you know, uh, taking on LSU. Now, obviously, if you're a Wisconsin fan, you know the season has not been, you know, the highest of, ex I mean, you had high expectations and did not live up to it. Luke Fickle and his air raid attack, 
didn't look great this week this year and obviously coming in here they're 10 and a half point underdogs i'm not expecting them to win out right but i think they have a chance here i think what wisconsin does best is what they run the football i don't care who they have out there they might have some guys sitting out they still have a great you know depth at the offensive line position and have a great depth of running backs they want to run the football and i think they're going to be able to score against the lsu defense who literally can't stop a nosebleed they cannot stop anyone i mean look at lsu I don't know. I mean, they already probably have some guys opting out, but this is a team that's given up 30 points. Like, it's going out of style. I mean, they gave up 30 plus points in three of their last four. We've seen offenses just run up and down on this field. And if we can see Wisconsin control the line of scrimmage, which they're capable of. I think they got a good chance of getting it done. Tanner Mordecai obviously didn't have a great year. Only about 1,700 yards and six touchdowns. Not good. But I think they're going to lean on the ground game, and I think that's what's going to keep them in this game if they can keep this one lower scoring. Now, obviously, LSU had a great season, had the Heisman Trophy winner. Jaden Daniels, well, yeah, he's not playing in this one. So he's obviously opted out, going to have his a sight set on the NFL. But his replacement, Garrett Noos- Noosmeyer, you know, he's gonna make in his first ever collegiate start. I don't know how good he's gonna be. And also, just like Logan talked about with Oregon, how motivated is a team like LSU here? Nothing really to play for. It's not like this is the biggest game of the day. I just think LSU's defense will not show up. And their offense can put up points, but I think if they're getting manhandled with the rushing attack from Wisconsin, which Wisconsin's certainly capable of doing, I think this is a closer game, probably within a touchdown. So we saw in the Tigers three losses this season. Gave up an average of 47 points per game. That's just not good. That defense can't do anything. Wisconsin's defense, I like them. Obviously, it hasn't been as good this year as it has been in years past. A lot of it due to their offense kind of setting them off in bad spots. But I think Wisconsin is going to have to step up here. Luke Fickle needs this win for the boosters out there. He's doing this one for the boosters who are going to donate more money. They would love to donate more money to this cause. Obviously, Wisconsin has a big you know, uh, backing behind them. But I think a big win here against this uh, LSU team would really give them some more added motivation and momentum going into the next year because obviously this year has been just an absolute L of a year it's been terrible but a win like this would obviously give them some momentum gives them some stuff in their recruiting class something to talk about obviously it's the first year for a a head coach never really know but obviously I think a win here and heck even not a win just keeping this game close against LSU will go long ways for a lot of their their programs so give me Wisconsin my only pick of Monday give me them plus 10 and a half that's how I'm going to wrap up 2023 and go into 2024 but Logan it's time to talk about all about the college football playoff games and we're going to actually tackle the second one first you have a pick in the Washington versus Texas game I'm going to lead it off and then we're going to talk about that the first game technically but where are you going with in this Washington, Texas game. Yeah, we're going to the Sugar Bowl, and I really do like Washington plus four and a half, minus 115 odds on FanDuel, currently your best value for this one. I do like the Washington Huskies. Uh, you know, as Austin mentioned, looking at these two college football games, you know, Washington was the pick that I, I'm like, yeah, I'll stick my neck out. I'll put my own money on it. And I do see an edge here for Washington, for the Washington Huskies against Texas. Now, Washington's top-ranked pass game helped the Huskies win 20 straight games, the longest active winning streak in the nation, including last year, 27-21 over Texas in the Alamo Bowl. So there is some familiarity there if you want to go back to, to them. But this Washington offense and this Washington team is just different, led by Michael Penix Jr., obviously. And, you know, he's one of the brightest stars in the game this, this year. And, and he's the, there, he led the most potent, uh, you know, passing game in the nation. The, the Washington Huskies averaged 343.8 yards through the air this season. And it's, it really starts on, honestly with those, with those wide receivers, that strong wide receiver duo, Jalen McMillan and Romeo Dunze. Those two, if you've never watched them, they will be most likely, you know, NFL players. They are, they are so good, you know, on, on the edge. They're so good at getting separation. And in, in college football, that's what you need. You need those playmakers on the outside. And I think, obviously, Michael Penix Jr., he's, he's, made, he's made to look so great because of the wide receivers he's throwing to. And I think they match up really well against this Texas secondary that struggled this season, finishing 85th against the pass, allowing more than 240 uh, passing yards per game. I think there's definitely some air yards to come there. And can, the question is, can Washington's offensive line, you know, give Michael Penix Jr. enough time to, you know, sit back and, and be able to make his reads? I think they definitely can. They allowed uh, less than a sack per game. And the, this this Texas front, I, I just don't see them being able to make a difference against this Washington offensive line. I think they're going to give Michael Penix Jr. enough time, uh, you know, to to pretty much dissect this Texas defense. I think Washington will move the ball up and down the field. The question kind of to me is, can they close in the red zone? Can they get those touchdowns rather than having to settle for field goals? I do think so. And I I think they're definitely going to be able to put up some points. 
And even though Washington's offense, they're the ones that they're the ones that everyone talks about. Everyone's talking about Michael Penix Jr. That's the obvious storyline. But Washington's defense has stepped up in a, in a big way to get to get them to even this point. Because if you remember how they have to play Oregon to, to beat Oregon twice, that took some really good defensive, you know, uh, uh, some really good defensive performances, and they allowed only an average of twenty five points in their last four games. So they they really stepped up. And they played to the level that, of that offense. Because you know what? An, a good offense is nothing without a good defense. And I think Washington Washington does play that complimentary, complimentary style football that I really want to see. They, they just have a good defense. And I think they'll be able to keep Texas you know, in, in control. I think Washington is a live underdog in this one that could win outright. But I, you know, Austin and I's college football, you know, sort of way of betting these games. We like to take the points because you just never know. I mean, it's so some wacky things happen in these games. You, you just want to have the points in your back pocket. Why? Well, that's why I'm taking Washington plus the points. But if you wanted to sprinkle on the money line, I wouldn't call you crazy because I think they are a live underdog in this one. I could easily see them beating Texas in this one, sort of beating Texas convincingly. I am very confident in Washington. Read my face. I think the Washington Huskies do get it done. I do think they went out right, but I'm going to take the points for safety. I think, you know, Washington's going to step up and prove why they even deserve to be in the college football playoffs. Yeah, Logan, uh, we both agree with that. I think we both love Washington. However, the game we don't both love one side is the uh, first game, the first college football playoff game, Alabama versus Michigan. I, we're both on opposite sides, hence why we're not giving out a pick. I'm going to give the plea for Michigan, and Logan's going to talk about why he likes Alabama. You guys can do whatever you want with it, and I'm not going to go too in-depth. I just think Alabama, this is a team that Nick Saban, I'm putting my money on him, not just on Alabama and how good their talented players are, Jalen Milrow and all those guys, but this team has come and won in games that they just had no business winning. I mean, sure, people are going to point holes. Hey, they should have lost to Auburn. Sure. They could have lost that game, but that's what good teams do. When they don't have their A game, they still manage to win games. And whether it took a miracle or not, on a fourth and like 100 yards, they got it done. And I just think Alabama has been here before. They've been here tons and tons of times. Michigan's been struggling to get through to the college football playoff. Nick Saban's been here too many times to not come up with a great game plan. So I love Alabama. I think their defense steps up in the first college football playoff game of Monday. And look, I think there's worse bets to make than to go with Alabama. So you know what? Logan, I'm rolling with the Alabama Crimson Tide. I'm going to let you make the case for the Michigan Huskies. Uh, go go, who, Michigan Wolverines. Why do you like them? You confused them with the Huskies because I was just loving on the Huskies. But, yes, the reason why we, we're, we're talking about this one is just I, I can't get there with Alabama. I just saw them, you know, skate by in too many games. I saw them sort of look vulnerable this year. I didn't really see that with Michigan. I mean, Michigan, they took care of business in the games they needed to against Penn State, against Ohio State. I just really do think there's a reason why the books are giving you plus money on Alabama. I think Michigan's going to dominate the line of scrimmage, which is weird to say, you know, against Alabama. I still think there's there's flaws there. Can you turn Jalen Milrow into a drop back passer? Because if you can and if you can contain him in the pocket, I think that's the, that's the key for, for Michigan to win this game. Michigan has a very, very potent running attack that that can really keep them in this game. And I just don't see I don't see a pathway of, of you know telling me Alabama is so much better than Michigan. I think Michigan has has shown they belong, and and th this is just one of those you know hurdles that they have to cross because you know obviously there's there's skepticism with you know the Harbaugh and all, all that controversy that surrounded them this year. But I just think my eyeballs don't lie. I I think Michigan's defense is legit. They, the fact that they were able to shut down you know Iowa in the Big Ten championship and make them look so bad. I don't think people really, uh, you know, understand how how good of a defense Michigan is. I think this game will be a reminder that Michigan's defense is legit. They have se a secondary that that can shut down Alabama's explosive playmakers. I think they're just going to move the ball and get it done. I don't think it's going to be a pretty game, but I do think Michigan wins, and that's kind of why we're on opposite sides. We we kind of see this game a little bit differently. Yeah, hundred percent. We don't really. If Logan's on that side. I'm on this side. It, it could go either way. I do think it's an ugly game. I think the game comes down to JJ McCarthy, how well he plays. Because if he's playing well, the Michigan Wolverines really tough team to beat. But if he's not playing too well, I think Alabama's gonna load the box, make someone else beat him. But I don't know. It's gonna be a fun game. So those are our three favorite picks of the day. Obviously, let us know your favorite picks if you're watching this in 2024. A happy New Year! But let's have a wonderful start to the new year. Hopefully, with a three and zero sweep on Monday. And well, hopefully, if you want to go check out our other videos, which you certainly will be posting those, you can check those out linked on the screen. Austin Logan signing out. See you guys in the next one. Peace.